Hello, here's how you can easily freeze players, which could be useful for something like a freeze taggy game. So enjoy. At first, I'm going to start with an empty verse file. First, I'm going to go up here and type in using slash fortnite.com slash character. So you get access to the characters module. Next, I'm going to be using a trigger in this video to actually make our player frozen. So I'm just going to make an add editable trigger like so. Next, we subscribe to the trigger event, which you can do like this like so. And this basically means that anything we pass inside the subscribe will be called anytime our trigger gets triggered. In my case, the freeze player function. We have to actually make our freeze player function in the first place. So create a freeze player function like so. Next, we pass in an agent of type question mark agent. We do this because an agent can either be an AI or a actual player. So we have to account for that. Next, inside of our function, we type in if statement. And here we check if this agent is an actual player. So we type in do that by assigning our agent question mark to type of player agent next we get our fort character by just doing player agent dot get fort character like so then we can call our fort character dot put in stasis like so that's going to actually freeze our player now this put in stasis function takes in an argument of type stasis underscore args this is going to control how our player or what our player can do when they are quote unquote frozen or put in stasis. Now you're probably wondering what stasis underscore args is. It's just a structure holding data members. In this case, allow turning, allow falling, and allow emotes. Real quick, allow turning just controls whether or not your player can turn around when they're in stasis. Allow falling will control whether or not your player is allowed to fall or if they're frozen in the air. And allow emotes, you can probably guess what that does. It just allows whether or not they can emote. They can probably see they're all of type logic, which basically means that we can control whether or not they're on or off based on a true or false value. Now you can pass in an empty stasis underscore arg structure, which just means everything's gonna be set to false. And you can do that like this. Basically typing stasis underscore args followed by empty squiggly braces. Here's what that looks like. When I trigger this, my character doesn't fall, I can't move, and my character won't face my camera. If you want to specify the actual arguments, you can do that by typing the name of the argument followed by a colon equals and a boolean, aka true or false. And so allow turning, allow falling, or allow emo. You can see when I have them all on, I fall, but I can't move when I actually hit the ground. But I can still turn around and all right, you're probably wondering how do I, you know, unfreeze myself? How do I release myself from stasis? Easy, just call the Ford character dot release from stasis. That'll release you from stasis. Now I'm going to make a function that's going to release me from stasis after five seconds. I'm going to call it unfreeze player. And I'm going to take in my Ford character as an argument like so. I'm going to add this suspend specifier, which basically means this is an asynchronous function, which can run in the background. We're going to need this for the sleep function that we're going to use. So type void equals. And you can just call forward character dot release from stasis function in here. To make this function be called after five seconds have passed, just call in your sleep function and type in the amount of seconds, in my case, 5.0 seconds, like so. You would think we could just call our unfreeze player function here and just pass in our Ford's character, but the problem is we get an error here, and the error is that our function has a suspend specifier. Like I said, suspend creates an asynchronous function. Now, by default, these can only be invoked inside an asynchronous context, which means a function that has the suspend specifier. Now, recall that our, our freeze player does not have this suspend specifier, which means we can just call our function like that, we're gonna get an error. However, we can get around this by typing in spawn, which will basically start an asynchronous context, and we can just call in our unfreeze player function inside here. Here's the final result. You can see that when I trigger, I get put in stasis, but after five seconds have elapsed, you can see that I can now move again. So yeah, I hope that was helpful, and yeah.